Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Good morning. So, uh, we come to um, another very interesting point of this course and today I will be discussing semiotics of cinema. So, some of the key concepts here would be what is image, icon, index, symbol, metonymy, metaphor, etcetera and how does the art of cinema appropriate all this. Um, I like to start with a quote by the great Hollywood director Frank Capra, Frank Capra who made classics such as uh, uh, It Happened One Night and Meet John Doe and uh, several more and he said film is one of these universe, uh, one of the three universal languages, the other two being mathematics and music. The idea is the universal language of cinema. We have been talking about the language of cinema, we have been um, looking at the various aspects of the language of cinema and this lecture is a continuation of the language of cinema. The idea is that how semiotics, how an understanding of the semiotics of cinema helps us in understanding the um, language of cinema. So, um, at this point I would like to uh, urge you to read uh, the first chapter by André Bézon and his uh, seminal book called What is Cinema and it will give you an excellent introduction to um, the basics of cinema okay, and what is, uh, what is the idea behind a moving image. So, uh, this is what I would like you to look at before we begin the uh, today's class. So, uh, going on to moving on to semiotics. So, the word semiotics is derived from the Greek word semion, which is uh, which means sign, S I G N. Uh, the modern disciplines of semiotics are invented by uh, two semioticians. When the first one is Charles Sanders Peirce, and the second one, very important person, Ferdinand de Saussure. So, um, these uh, uh, especially Saussure and he published a general course in linguistics, the lectures that he uh, gave were later published um, as a book in a book form a general course in linguistics. Essentially semiotics is the study of science. Now, filmmaking is choosing the precise images for the particular story and we have to remember every picture tells a story. In, the, in today's class, I am going to ask you to watch a number of images and uh, movie film, uh, movie stills as well as movie scenes and then you have to understand that um, even uh, a movie still, a movie poster tells us a story. It is noteworthy what can be read from a single image. Now, uh, I am applying the theory of semiotics to semiotics of cinema, to the concept of semiotics in cinema. So, for Pierce, Charles Sanders Pierce, there were multiple types of sign and three main types are worth discussion. Now, uh, we will move on to that, but uh, also let me give you a quote by uh, the great um, theorist, semiotic, uh, semiotician Rolla Bart, uh, the French semiotician who states in his book Mythologies that trivial aspects of everyday life can be filled with meaning and this includes a number of things. So, in other words film is the art of visual abbreviation, cinema is synesthetic as it arouses different senses. Now, when we, uh, when we refer to Rolla Bart's um, concept of trivial aspects of everyday life that can be filled with meaning, uh, it also includes a character's hairstyle, okay, a character's smile, a gesture. So, all these um, visual images can be filled with 
meaning and that is what we understand, that is what, what we mean by visual abbreviation. Now, um, three things. So, there is a, the icon which is a sign which is similar to what it signifies, then there is the index which is affected by what it represents and then there is symbol, the symbol which is a sign that is connected to what it signifies by a law or convention. So, indexic, indexical or index, this is a direct connection between what is indicated and our understanding of that information. An index is a mode in which the signifier might not resemble uh, its signified object. It is not arbitrarily assigned and is directly connected in some way to the object. Now, Pierce semiotics and sociosemiology have been influential in the art, in the studies of the verbal arts. In the article, Art as Semiotic Fact, Jean Mokrovsky uses the semiotic framework for the study of art and tells us that the work of art should be considered as a sign composed of a signifier and a signification, where signification is an aesthetic object registered in the collective consciousness. Critics have also discussed how visual semiotics can be applied to folk art, folk songs, um, all kinds of music and theatre. Theatre as a medium is considered by these critics for studying the semiotic structure which includes decor, costume, voice, music, in other words the tropes of a mise en scene. Now, as we have been talking about film has a distinctive language, it has its own grammar, its own idiom. It is composed of signs, it is a mosaic of distinctive images and fragmented narratives and therefore, every fragmented narrative can be explained through the images that are implicit there. Therefore, it would be noteworthy to quote Christian Metz, an another great film theorist or semiotician who says film is hard to explain because it is so easy to understand. Now, uh, uh, this is a loaded statement, film is so hard to explain because it is so easy to understand and there, therefore, comes the uh, you know part of a film scholar or someone who is interested in reading films. You see, everyone has a take on films. Uh, anyone you meet would uh, uh, know that, uh, you know, they have a, a critique or something to offer on uh, any film. But the point is that unless and until you are trained to ad, uh, appreciate film through the theories, so through its science, through understanding its language, till then you cannot uh, claim to have complete understanding of any film. Um, so, uh, we have been talking about semiotics and film images are signs. Now, film making is all about choosing the precise images for the particular story. Um, Peter Wallen in Science and Meanings in Cinema talks of sign as a triptych. He talks about index, icon and symbol that I have already talked about and indexical signs lead to something important. For example, think of clocks in the mood for love, Wong Kar Wai's movie. I have been talking about how even a hairstyle is worthy of reading meanings into an image and then filmmakers also resort to various other things such as smiles, scars, guns, badges, hairstyle. So, again we are talking about Rola Bart and trivial aspects of everyday life which are loaded with meaning. At this point, I would like you to uh, watch this particular clipping. This is from a film called Grease. Um, it is a 1970s film and here is the link to the YouTube. The film stars John Travolta and Olivia Newton-John. Please watch this uh, clipping and come back to me. Now, um, what did you observe there? So, there, there are two people sitting in a car here. You have John Travolta, you have Olivia Newton-John. John Travolta's character Denny uh, is obviously making advances towards 
Olivia Newton John who plays a character called Sandy. Now, what are the two distinctive features about the appearances of these two characters? Let us talk about it. So, Danny's clothes and his hairstyle, what do they suggest? They conform to the stereotype of a rock and roll star. Okay, so, we are talking about the movie is a period film, it, though it was made in 1978, it is actually set during the 50s and the 60s and it is like a homage to uh, rock and roll stars such as Elvis Presley and the so called the cool uh, stars of that period such as James Dean uh, also. Uh, the defect this uh, uh, affected youth kind of roles as popularized by uh, Marlon Brando, particularly in his film The Wild One, The Wild Ones, and of course James Dean and his um, Rebel Without a Cause. So again, now uh, distinguish John Travolta's appearance with uh, uh, Olivia Newton-John's and her hair, her clothes. So, they conform to the notion of the so called good girl, notions of respectability. So, the film has fun with these stereotypes, that is what the film is all about. I like you to enjoy the movie and uh, please do watch this particular song called Summer Nights. I am giving you the YouTube link to it, watch the song and come back to me. Here the song also says a lot about um, the differences between these two characters. Okay, um, so, we have been talking about uh, <coughs> icon. Now, so icon is the sign that represents the objects mainly by similarity. Iconic images are those images which are very familiar to us. us these are stories and meanings behind, there are stories and meanings behind such kind of an image. A narrative is frozen in an iconic image. Um, Audrey Hepburn's famous little black, black dress and her holding a long, long cigarette holder from breakfast at Tiffany's can be called an iconic image. Okay. It remains firmly edged in our collective consciousness. Um, so, filmmakers construct meanings through such signs. Sign has two parts, importantly signified and signif signifier and signified. Signifier is the physical part, you know it is also called sign as object or um, the tangible thing that we can touch or see or hear. Signified is the psychological part, which is the reaction to the object, the mental picture a uh, signifier evokes the internal response to the, this is the internal response to the signifier. So, two things signifier signified, signified is what we see, Sign, signif, uh, sorry signifier is what we see and signified is the mental picture and image or a signifier may evoke. Signified could mean different things to different people. Um, for instance, um, a rose uh, physically is a rose. So, signifier, if you look at rose as a signifier, it is just a flower. But when we start reading meanings into it, so signified and it can mean different things to different people. Uh, for example, let me draw your attention to that famous scene uh, from American Beauty. Uh, Sam Mendes's American Beauty, where rose petals and the color red, they are physical objects, so signifier, but they signify, as signifies they mean different things to different people. When, when we see in the opening scene of the film and uh, we see Annette Benning's character, she is uh, cutting off the stems of roses, red roses. It may even mean that she is in uh, uh, at one level emasculating, castrating her husband as played by Ken Spacey. But when uh, he encounters Angela, his daughter's uh, teenage friend, then Lester Burnham, that is a character that Kevin Spacey plays, and his characters, 
his character starts go, um, undergoing a transformation and rose uh, roses and rose petals they start acquiring a different meaning while talking about semiotics we also use a word uh, or term synecdoche now synecdoche is a relationship of a part to a whole um, so often we may say uh, uh, we may associate a heroine's smile like Marilyn Monroe's smile, um, we may associate cigarette with an actor like Humphrey Bogart and uh, the cigar with an actor like Clint Eastwood especially when he plays his uh, the hero from a western movie the cowboy roles. There is also an expression a term that you should know that is metonymy. Now, metonymic uh, or metonymy helps establish a relationship based on association. A metonym substitutes one thing with another. For example, the pen stands in for the written word, the sword stand in, stands in for military aggression and force. As a figure of a speech, a metonym replaces several changeable things with one vivid image. The visual texts are essentially metonymic. A flag for instance is a metonym, it stands for a cause and it symbolizes patriotism. patriotism. David Fincher's Zodiac is another interesting film that you should be watching in order to understand the concept of science. Okay, it is a story about a serial killer, a psychotic killer and there are three men who are interested in finding the discovering the identity of this mysterious killer and there are several clues and signs that uh, the uh, one of the characters as played by um, Jay Glenhall he uh, works out. So, that is a very interesting study in understanding signs and codes. Now, uh, as I have already to, uh, talked about Peter Wallen and signs and meanings in cinema and he talks about index icon and um, symbol. So, um, index for example, is a sign or an image. For example, a tree is a tree and a woman is a woman, a clock is a clock. An icon has a stories and meanings behind the image and as we have been talking about, a narrative is often frozen in its images. For example, uh, you may recall Tom Hanks uh, iconic picture sitting on a bench with uh, a bus stand you know sitting on a bench waiting for a bus and with his back towards us um, and with a, a briefcase next to him, a suitcase next to him. This is from Forrest Gump, an iconic scene and again think of Peter Fonda and Dennis Hopper riding away on the Harley Davidson. So, that is an iconic image from Easy Rider. Um, there are also the concepts of denotation and connotation when we talk about semiotics. So, denotation is the primary direct meaning whatever we see in a picture just like signifier. Now, connotation is the secondary indirect meaning depending on the collective cultural attitudes and personal associations. So, uh, for Peter Wallen symbol is a cultural absolute to be significant images in a film should be developed. Now, we will uh, move on to another semiotician that is Roland Bart uh, and his five systems of meaning which he gives in his essay S by Z. He calls them quotes and quotes function like grammar to a language which can be used to construct meanings. Uh, Bart gives us five quotes namely the enigma code, the connotative code, the action code, the symbolic code and the cultural code. The enigma, uh, the enigma code is uh, when a film sets puzzles and poses problems and hints at secrets to be diverged and mysteries to be unearthed. The questions that we uh, may ask what is going to be, uh, what is this going to be about and what is going to happen next, also what happens at the end. At this point I would like you to watch this clipping from Hitchcock's Vertigo, please note down the YouTube link, watch this scene and then we will uh, you may understand what is meant by the enigma code. Okay, so, uh, having watched that much 
part of this great film. This is a, a movie that I would highly recommend if I, you have not already, if you have not already watched it. Now, the hero who is a detective and he has been requested by a friend of his to follow his wife because uh, not that he uh, thinks that the wife is having an affair, but uh, the wife has been behaving very strangely of late and the hero, the detective hero as played by James Stewart, he follows this lady, um, the wife. Uh, Madeline as played by Kim Novak and he follows her um, all over the town that the town is San Francisco and um, here is the famous museum scene and then um, there is an uncanny re resemblance between um, the lady that is Madeline and the lady in the picture, woman in the picture okay. and then um, several clues are given to us about the identity of this woman and then uh, we are also, it is very enigmatic, we are led to ask ourselves that what is this going on and where is it, um, where will all this lead to us. So, that is your enigmatic code. Now, the connotative code or the semantic code is uh, about the signs that uh, imbue characters and uh, settings with meaning. These signs include speech, clothing, movement and gestures. The code creates illusion of real people having real experiences in real world. The idea of this code is that meaning is the result of the interaction between the film and the audience. Uh, the action code is signs belonging to a pattern of uh, an action and after that I will take you to the symbolic code. I mean action code is quite simple. You watch a particular clipping or still. You know, let us assume that you look at the poster of a Bruce Lee movie, you know the action of the film, it is going to be a martial arts film. But if you look at the poster of, um, let us assume, um, uh, Richard Gere and Julia Roberts is standing uh, back to back uh, in a still of pretty woman and you know that uh, it is going to be anything but an action movie, it is going to be a romantic film, a drama or even a romantic comedy. Okay, so, that is the action code for you. So, you read meanings into images. Now, the symbolic code refers to the way an audience receives text by organizing all experiences into a binary pattern. For example, good versus bad, masters, master versus slave, hero versus villain, true versus false. So, this helps in our understanding of what the filmic text means. Now, the cultural code, the cultural code encompasses the text references to things already known. It depends on certain shared assumptions of cultural behavior, morality and politics. Culture not only constitutes the self, but also constra constrains the self. These films raise questions about the codes of conduct in a particular social order. For but all five of these codes are bound by the weight of convention, what he calls what is already been, what has already been written and done. It applied to, uh, applied to works of literature or films, these signs and codes are like grammar to a language and are used to construct meaning. Um, at this point I would like to, I would like you to um, look up the poster or the still of a, a film called Falling Down. It is a Joel Schumacher movie and uh, please watch this st um, still with Michael Douglas. Okay, so, um, here I uh, will just tell you how to read meanings into a still like that. Now, what do you see there? Here is a, a man, almost middle aged man pushing 50s or so. He is standing uh, somewhere in the middle of a park on these stairs, um, on these stairs. He is surrounded by the cityscape at the same time he is in the middle of a park okay, which is not a very well maintained kind of a space. So, what are we talking about is spaces which are not too well maintained, not, uh, very kind of disorderly and then this man who is dressed up like a, a regular man, you know regular an uh, all American person and is also wearing glasses. Okay and he is carrying a briefcase. So, perhaps he is a working man, he is uh, someone who has a regular white collar job, but then he is also holding a gun in his another hand. So, 
what does it mean? So, you have why does why is he holding a gun? So, that is your enigma code ok. Um, and because you understand the cultural aspect of cinema, you know uh, you know what uh, that uh, it raises the question about his code of conduct. The symbolism is very clear, the symbolic code that contrasts the binaries between skyscrapers and the sites which have been demolished with uh, all around him ok. And then the connotative codes as understood by his clothes, his hairstyle, glasses, very regular kind of a person ok. So, this is what I mean by semiotics and you can use several meanings into um, uh, uh, an image just by looking at a picture. So, um, here is a bibliography, um, I would like you to read Terence Hawke's Structuralism and Semiotics and another uh, very important book is Jonathan Culler's Structuralist Poetics, Structuralism, Linguistics and the Study of Literature. Frederick Jameson's The Prison House of Language, a critical account of structuralism and Russian formalism. So, this is your bi bibliography. So, thank you very much and we meet for our next class.